peace and blessings and abundance to everybody. I hope y'all out there taking care of yourselves as we enter the new month, man. I hope y'all also out there taking care of y'all people, man. Keep an eye on them and make sure they all good the way you would like for them to do to you. Uh, I just wanted to go over a handful of a handful of reps from the signs of wind over the Minnesota Timberwolves on Tuesday. Uh, these are all taking place in the fourth quarter. We saw yet another Chris Paul takeover. Devin Booker was in foul trouble, so he was out for a majority, if not all, of these plays here that we're going to be going over. And uh, the the Suns had a sizable lead going into the fourth quarter. Monty tried using the the um, all bench unit to at least hold down the fort and buy more minutes for the starters to get more rest. That didn't work. That that lineup was a uh, I think they were a minus three, and uh, the Timberwolves almost came back. They ended up as you can see in the score here in the still frame got two with them too. So we're going to break down a handful of clips from when Chris Paul and a handful of other starters came back into the game. And, uh, and yeah, so this first play is going to be a lot of pick and roll. I'm going to just let you guys know that ahead of time. So the first play here, we're going to see a very unique spacing manipulation from the Phoenix Suns. So, of course, they have a handful of shooters, and they have a, a multitude of ways in which they go about spacing them around whatever pick and roll action or action in general. Um, that they're running. So as we let this one kind of flow through, you'll see, first and foremost, it's Mikael Bridges setting a screen. And he said he's setting a, a super high, like look at the pickup point on CP3. So Bridges is setting a super high um, pick right here. And it's empty side. So they vacated the entire right side of the floor outside of CP3 and Mikael Bridges. So Mikel comes to set the screen, and now that, that entire side is empty. But also, look on the other side of the floor. Look at the spacing. Devin Booker is splitting the difference between the slot and the, the side of the three-point line, closer to the sideline. And look at where look at where Cam Johnson is. Cam Johnson is empty that corner as well as he's sitting free throw line extended. That spacing manipulation is tugging at the tagging and the and the help from outside of the initial players in the pick and roll, and even Rudy Gobert, who's going to be stepping up as they put two on CP3 um, and then eventually go with the late switch. So as we let it flow through, you can see here, CP3 does a great job getting the pass out on time. Mikel does a great job with the angle on his screen, and then as he does best, pushing off of that screener when they're switching to give himself that extra little boost getting out the blocks on the dive to the short roll. As he gets it in the short roll, he sees Rudy's already pre-rotated high. And remember, Rudy's in charge of Bismack. Bismack was hanging out in the dunker spot with Cam Johnson's space free throw line extended. So Nas Reed, as Gobert steps up, will be the person that will be in charge of putting out the fire, the fire being Bismack Biombo sitting here under the basket. And Edwards is going to slide down, and he's going to play too. If Cam Johnson um, sinks to the corner, as Reed, if Reed were to go over to Bismack under the basket, he doesn't because he's in a compromising situation with the extremely hot Cam Johnson on the floor. And by virtue of the spacing manipulation of the Suns, this was after timeout as well. It was a genius call from Monty Williams. By virtue of the spacing, they aired on the three-point shooting, and that opened up this underneath duck in from the dunker spot from Bismack Biombo. Great call from Monty Williams. Great execution from the Suns. All right, this next play here, we got more pick and roll rep. This is just going to be CP3 in the drop this time. Or, excuse me, CP3 attacking the drop this time with that patented snake dribble. Does a great job coming off tight. Great screen from Busy. But look at the spacing again. This time it's a more traditional spread pick and roll. They keep the floor spaced extremely well. And, again, just I want to highlight the great screening from Bismack Biombo here. Just completely discarding of the initial defender as he always does. And then a great job from CP3 stringing that out. Gobert doesn't want to leave the porch. And that's a layup. All right, so now here is where it started getting fun. The Suns went to their 77, which is a double drag. And CP3 was able to wreak all types of havoc in multiple, in multiple ways out of this action alone. So as you can see here, there's his patented yo-yo dribble. He has a, a handful of reasons why he does it based on the scenario and situation and who all is involved. So as he comes off of this, and keep this in mind, the Timberwolves were switching the initial screen, which is usually a smaller guy, Mikel Bridges here, 
setting the screen. So D is gonna end up being responsible for CP3 on the initial switch. And then Cat fires back into a drop. As he fires back into that drop, CP3, as he comes off the second screen, his eyes are immediately on <clears throat> Kyle Anderson, slow mo, who is a low man here. It's Cam Johnson in the corner there occupying that space. So as he comes off, he gives a yo-yo dribble to hold Kyle Anderson and also buy himself enough time to help create more of an angle to then set up this pass to Cam Johnson for three. So the yo-yo dribble not only buys time, it allows for Busy to get more into his role as CP3 drags two and um and cast drop. And that also brings Anderson over more as he's not necessarily tagging the roller, but he's kind of jabbing at the roller. That holds him to his responsibility. And then he manipulates it completely with this unbelievable pass, zipping it over to the corner, throws a fastball to Cam Johnson. On time and on target. And he knocks that down. All right, a minute and some change later, we get into another pick and roll rep here. This time it's going to be spread pick and roll with CP3 getting a drag screen from Busy. And as Busy says, he does a great job of creating a separation, coming off and firing off with that. And CP3 is going to manipulate the low man again. This time the space is a little different. Cam Johnson is above the break this time. And it's Mikael Bridges in the corner. So CP3 again drags two. He holds, holds for Cat as casting his drop. And as Anderson is still loading up, he kind of steps up a little bit higher than he was before to try to take away the angle. But Chris, instead of throwing it to his man, he throws it to a spot. And that spot is out of Kyle Anderson's wide rings, wide wingspan's reach. And he gets it over to Mikhail, and that generates an advantage because Anderson is out of position. He has to close out to at least, at least force Bridges to think about him, not necessarily run him off the line. And Mikhail is so good now with his handle and especially driving and attacking closeouts. He's able to completely discard of Kyle Anderson. And then he gets to the other side for when his patented finishes on the other side of the basket. All right, now we got another 77 rep here. This time it's going to be Cam Johnson setting the initial screen. And they're bringing Carl Anthony Towns into the fold. Towns into the fold again with the Timberwolves switching the initial screen. is going to put Cat in a precarious situation where you have to navigate over the Bismarck screen or they have to downright switch it with Gobert. You see where Gobert is right now. He's in a very short drop, kind of like catch, if you will. Um, so that automatically means from CP3's perspective that Cat is going to be switching this, and we see what he does here. This casually strolls into that spot that he's made a living out of hitting jump shots for him in a multitude of ways. Gets to that elbow spot. That's a layup. And lastly, we're going to get into one more 77 rep. This time, again, they all right switch it, but Cat jumps up a little bit higher than he did last time. And because of that, Bismack sees it as well, and they do a great job with their with their communication body language-wise. Busy sees that Cat is kind of jumping it to try to deter him and force him to his left hand. So Busy smartly switches the angle on the screen. He flips it. Inside, that becomes a switch. And now CP3 has, guess who? Rudy Gobert out in space, a long way away from the porch. If CP3 wanted to on this roll, he could have just lobbed it over the top for Busy to get a layup. But CP3 has the high hand, and he does what he does here. Lowe's going to sleep a little bit. And then goes quick release with his left hand, a little hop, into the three-point pull-up, and that splash. That's another excellent compilation the execution from the Phoenix Suns with CP3 as the head of the snake and just really attacking the, the the multitude of coverages and styles of defense that the Minnesota Timberwolves were trying to give CP3 in this fourth quarter and the Suns just won yet another chess battle they did so with some crunch time reps again and yeah the Suns are back the Suns are back <laughs>